Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox, giving you the edge you need to get into the colleges of your dreams. With your host, Steve Schwartz. That's me. Right now, you're listening to part two of a two-part interview. So check out part one if you haven't already. We split this one up into two episodes because there was so much good information that we couldn't fit it all into one. Enjoy. Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox. I'm so excited to have on the program today Quasi Enan. Overall, you know, you had your extracurriculars, you had the SAT, you had your, your GPA. What would you say was the biggest factor in your admission to all of these top colleges? I think it was my supplemental essays. I wrote them and they were one giant metaphor for the journey I'd been taking in life towards getting somewhere better. It was always not about being the best. I don't ever think I was the best in any particular area in high school, but I think it was the fact that I was so good near the top in just so many different categories. Application is about how well you represent yourself. And I just kind of wanted to ask every college, do you like me for all that I can show you? And in those essays, I talked about that like long journey, like I said, from where my parents came what learning had meant for them, what medicine had meant for them and education and how they had like imposed that on me, how I rejected a lot of it, how I internalized some of it and made it my own. And I think I reflected well that going on to the next step, accepting that college is a big part of your life. If you want to go on to do some kind of professional degree or graduate degree in general, that I needed to do this. I need to make it matter. I thought that I needed to better myself. That no matter how strong I may seem at that, this point in the world, there's so many more people out there who are just better, at, better than me in every aspect of my life that I could probably point to. There's always a better musician. There's always a better studier. There's always a better runner or something along those lines. But if I go to a school where they're all there, all these people who are better, and have their own strengths and weaknesses, if we all interact with each other and they become your friends, you'll get better too. Kind of to your own place of I'm as best as I can be in this place, in this area, in this kind of studying. I kind of explained all of that through my essays, which takes a lot of work in terms of uh, how to write well, which is hard for, like high, for just a high schooler. But if you take the right courses and you meet the right kind of teachers who have passions for those things, like my English teacher did in um, 11th grade, uh, she really helped me learn how to convey these feelings succinctly. And I think I did that pretty well. And that might have been the biggest factor, that these colleges knew who I was and they liked me. Absolutely. Getting them to like you is so important and really making sure that your, your personal essays are personal. They're about you. Mm-hmm. And you know, so many valuable insights you shared there. You know, one of them I love is the idea of you know, putting a lot of work into those supplemental essays. You know, for a lot of applicants, they're just an afterthought. Everyone focuses on the Common App 650 Word main essay and they're forgetting that these supplemental essays you know, really matter to colleges too. It's you know, why they bother to write their own specific essay topic rather than relying upon the common app ones. Exactly. It's it's really important to hear that, hear that you put that work into those. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to ask you one final question before we move into the next segment, which is what led you to choose Yale among, among all the different colleges there? So I have my own breakdown as to how I look to the colleges. It's really easy to glorify them naturally. Um, when you're just an applicant hoping that they would like you enough to accept you. And then when you actually have the options, you can then get really, really judgmental. So, you know, um, for me, Brown and Dartmouth both gave us financial aid, so that wasn't an option. Cornell was kind of in the middle of nowhere at the end of the day, and Ithaca's really cold, so I didn't think that works out so great. (laughs) Um, Along those that same vein, Harvard's Boston's super cold. I also don't share the allure that many people have about Boston slash Cambridge. So I kind of just put that, away, um, that idea away. Uh, they also didn't work with me with financial aid. They also have, a, in my opinion, when you ask people from Harvard, why should I go here? Which I asked during my 10th grade um, Easter, uh, March Easter break, when I visited that college with my family, I kept asking like, so, so why would you go here? People kind of said, because it's Harvard. And I just thought that wasn't a sufficient answer ever. And I just didn't find enough reason to, for Harvard to even have its name. I didn't like the look of the layout of the campus and whatnot. So that idea was gone. Um, I think it's one of the biggest ones to push away. Uh, Princeton, like I said, I applied early to. I really loved how, I think it has the most beautiful 
canvas of the ivies. And it's, it had such a nice bubble effect to it. At the same time, that bubble effect kind of adds this feeling that like I'm less in college and more of an academic country club. And that felt really weird that there were these, I don't know how to put it, I think country clubs is the best way to describe it. And I just realized that that was not for me. I couldn't deal with the socioeconomic stratification that it had. So I had to let that go. Columbia, my cousin had gone there. It was really cutthroat. The city's awesome, but it'd be a lot to handle as an undergrad with a lot of temptations in different spheres of living in the city. And their campus is kind of small. And I also didn't like the idea of having to read the entire Iliad before I got there. So <laughs> I pushed that away. So I think at this point, it was Harvard. No, it was Yale versus UPenn. Because UPenn had a really nice mix, a lot of different feelings. It was both, you know, obviously very strong academically, but it was very fun. Um, in various ways. My bold, my Quaker days that I went on were just one of the like, most exciting times I'd ever had in my life. There were just hundreds of events to go through. I went through so many different like culture centers. Um, I sat in like all these different classes. I thought I'd never take like a Shakespeare class because I didn't like Shakespeare when I was in uh, high school. Yet at UPenn, I, the one class I took on it made me love all of, you know, a fellow and whatnot. It was just so fun. And everyone there was like, so like excited over, over genetic, uh, over energetic, I should say. And I just love that atmosphere. And then at Yale, while well, UPenn kind of felt like this really like this hot new thing that flashed before my eyes that I just didn't take in enough when I was applying. Cause I just, you know, I thought, what are the odds I'll actually get in? Yale was like this really comforting, friendly, and warm environment where there wasn't a single person I'd met that wasn't super excited to share with me why they came to Yale, why they love it. And why they're reminded every day that they're in the best school they could possibly imagine in the best atmosphere with just the happiest people who have the biggest passions I'd seen in my life at that point. And while you was that hot new thing, it was that really comforting, always going to be there for you best friend. And I knew that that was such a big pull. And on top of that warm feeling, um, Yale has such a big drive for like artistic creativity. So my music passions that I shared Yale is ridiculously big on acapella, for example, and I'm an acapella group now here. Um, they love theater. They have so many different um, art shows and like dance works every week, every day. And I just thought on top of all the other like academic factors to want to come to Yale, that I could, I could be very happy in this environment. I'd prosper. And I'd get just new perspectives from people who'd come from like every part of life. So, I thought Yale was the most encompassing or the kind of person I wanted to be someday. So I decided to go to Yale. Totally. Well, it sounds like you, know, you had a big list of options and you really methodically you know, reasoned through each of those and sounds like you got a great fit there. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I want to I shift gears now and move into you know, the worst moment you experienced in the college admissions process. Really take us to that moment in time and tell us the story behind it. Yeah, I think my worst moment was actually after I'd gotten all these schools. And it was after the world kind of wanted to know. After, you know, my PR guy at my high school decided, oh, this doesn't have to be just the high school newspaper. We can make this, like, big. It probably won't work, but let's try it anyway. And then when it became big, and I had to deal with things like news reporters coming into my high school and not letting me walk around with my friends because they wanted to interview me or, like, filming me just – being in class or coming to my house and demanding for my um, essay uh, and my scores. After all of that nonsense, I then had to deal with once it became known to the world and my friends got to see what it's like to watch it all happen. People just got really, really, they kept ask, like, asking themselves why they couldn't got in. For those people who applied. And then other people just started using race as this giant factor as to like how I got into these schools or just how other friends, you know, other uh, unrepresented minorities had gotten into the colleges when they couldn't. And it just got so, it just tore people apart. I think a college rejection, while I haven't experienced it, I think I understand how detrimental it can be to like your emotional health at that point in your life. Because you're being really vulnerable when you offer up who you are. You're asking those colleges, do you like me? And someone's going to say no, in essence, that there was someone they wanted more. I guess that can hurt someone in a kind of way that just makes them jaded in many ways towards their friends who are also applying but gotten in where they couldn't. And people just started to point fingers and 
they thought they knew the process and you only got in because of this. You only got in because of that. Or you spent high school like being a grade grubber or something and now it helps you now, but like that was stupid. Things like that. I really hated that atmosphere. I hated reading the comments beneath all the articles because I hated reading the articles about myself because it was just weird. But the comments that people made were often so negative and they just, people got so bigoted. I, I hated seeing that aspect of humanity and it made me just uh, shun media in many ways for the like sens- sensationalism that it offers. I think that was the worst part of the whole process, watching people become wicked over this process. Sure, sure. People are stressed and doesn't always bring out the best in them. Um, yeah. how, how, do you, how did you handle all, all of this publicity? The publicity? I, I, the comments I tried to, and things like that. I tried to shun as much of the publicity as possible because it just every new article gave some more people reasons to be mad, in essence. And I already knew that, you know, I'd obviously gone in these colleges. I need the world to know. It was my own process. I didn't make my own decisions. And the world butting into that didn't help. Uh, and when it came to those kind of accusations, well, when it was my friends who were kind of annoyed, I just had to kind of logic out why it, it worked for me that regardless of, you know, race or background, I mean, I had objective statistical scores to put me in that category. They were almost, actually they were higher than all of my friends. So they couldn't argue with that. And when it came to other people offering their perspective as to why they should have gotten in, um, I shouldn't have. Uh, I think I realized like the perspective, the background of my high school makes things very different. That's one of the most um, underrated high schools in all of New York. Uh, I think only 28% of my high school graduating class every year actually goes to a four year college. So like with just that kind of pushback kind of to prospecting college, the fact that I'd done well, made me stand out more so compared to other kids who come from top colleges and high school, I'm um, top high schools and rich urban uh, suburban environments where they're just, they're doing well as just one of many, whereas mine was one of none. So knowing that helped me deal with people who made all those accusations. Sure. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of time to reflect on this. I want to shift gears now and move into the lightning round where Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. You give me some rapid fire responses. Are you ready? Ready. Awesome. What's your number one piece of advice for the college admissions process. Think of your reach schools as soon as you possibly can, whether that be 10th grade or 11th grade, or even the summer before senior year, you should kind of know where you want to go. You should kind of know in what kind of world will I have to be in to get there and visit those colleges, write down as much as you can, Google everything possible about them, find out what they kind of look for in a student and make your application reflect that. Absolutely. Could you share with us one habit that you believe contributes to college admission success? Um, planning really early. Knowing exactly what those colleges want from sophomore year lets you take all those tests and prepare for them ahead of time. For every AP test, buying the, net, the prep book at the start of the year, reading it as you're taking the course and understanding it completely before you move on to every new unit is a giant help. The SAT starting a year before you want to take it is a pretty ideal place to be at. And just diving into all the like nuances of that test so you can conquer it is a really good thing to do. And writing your essays when they come out in August is a giant plus. Absolutely. Planning ahead is so key. What's one law online college admissions resource that you absolutely love? Um, I have a love and hate relationship with the website called College Confidential. It's full of, I would say, the top 5% of college applicants who are fighting and finding all the nuances of college admissions and how it can help slash deter them from going to where they want to go. Uh, There's a lot of good in that website. They have a lot of advice as to what you should do, but there's a lot of really bitter people. There's a lot of argumentative people. There's a lot of trolls, internet trolls. So I don't think getting sucked in that kind of environment is good for the average applicant, but the advice it gives is a giant plus. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's one book that no college applicant should be without? The SAT Blue Book. Um, College Board offers that blue book. I I know everyone wants to take Princeton Review and Kaplan and all of these different test services. But honestly, that blue book is made by the people who make the test for you. So take it. Take all the practice tests. And honestly, I think I bought that book. I, I know I bought that book twice. Finished it once. Got those scores. Figured out why they're wrong. 
took the test again and made sure I made an increase in points because that meant I actually learned something from the book. Definitely. Getting those SAT questions straight from the college board themselves is so important. So now, now you're at Yale, Quasi. Um, you're, you're pre-med, I assume? Yes. So what, what, what's keeping you busy these days? What are you looking forward to? Oh, so I'm, I'm majoring in molecular biology here. Uh, Yale's a long name for that major called molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. I'm taking all the prereqs for that. So at the moment, it's bio, chem, took calculus, taking English. Um, I've taken some of my music classes on top of that. Um, I'm also in an acapella group. So Yale's really big on acapella. My group's called the Society of Orpheus and Bacchus. We spend, you know, hours out of the week singing and rehearsing um, over our breaks, like spring tour um, and winter tour. On winter tour, we went up and down the East Coast. We went to New York City, Richmond, Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, Miami. In Miami, we met Gabrielle Union. Um, nice. That was super cool. Uh, spring tour, we flew all the way to LA, and then we drove down to New Mexico, um, Phoenix, Arizona before that, and then eventually ended up in Dallas uh, Houston, and in Houston, Texas. So that group I spent a lot of time with. They're like my own family on campus. It's very cool. I work for the Yale School of Medicine. Um, I work in the Alzheimer's Disease Research Unit. I do some, I take people over to MRI scans and PET scans. Um, it's a cool experience to kind of see the psychiatric aspect of medicine. I'm spending time working with a partner at School of Management. His name's Sean Patel. I think you know him already. Um, yeah. He is 2400 expert going for him. Um, it's a great company, I think. It offers legitimate advice, which is a big plus. And he wants me to kind of work with him. So the advice that he gives for SAT from someone who's taken the test, been a mediocre at start, and ended up perfect. I have a similar vein of started off just knowing I wanted to apply, working for it, and got there with the college admissions. So next year is hopefully going to be the start of a really big uh, project together to really help a lot of stressed out college student, uh, high school seniors figure out what they're going to do with themselves when it comes to college. Yeah, absolutely. Sean's great. I've actually interviewed him for the show as well. So I'm glad got both you guys on here. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us, Quasi. This was so insightful. Our listeners got a ton of value out of it. Any final words of wisdom before you go? To everyone who's really scared about the college admissions, everyone's really excited. For the people who have made decisions who are stressed out every day, college admissions do not define you. And I think what matters more than where you go to college is what you make of yourself in college. There are pluses and downsides to going to any type of college, whether they be your local state school, a small um, liberal arts school, or a big Ivy League school. Um, And I don't think you should ever devalue yourself or value yourself more so because of the school you're going to. At the end of the day, it's going to be a name on a resume and you're applying somewhere. It'll be something to look back on, to be happy about. You know, you grew a lot during those four years or so. But when you're just applying and you're just starting to dip your feet, don't worry about it. Don't think about the name so much. And kind of just take in college for all that it's worth because it goes by really quickly. Absolutely. That's, that's so valuable. It's ultimately, it's about who you are you know, is, is what you're going to make of yourself. It's not necessarily, you know, just about where you go. So thank you for emphasizing that. Where, where can folks find you online? I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I exist in the world. I don't think I'm that hard to find, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, folks can definitely look you up if they try, I'm sure. Yeah. But thank you so much again for joining us, Quasi. This was amazing. Anytime. Thanks for listening to College Admissions Toolbox. Head over to www.collegeadmissionstoolbox.com to get more free tools and resources that will help you get into the colleges of your dreams. One of the hardest things about the college process is finding the money to pay for it all. I was only able to get the scholarships I needed after I figured out how to present myself and what I'd done in the best possible way. So now, I want to give you a free worksheet I made. It's based on my experience working with thousands of high school students. I'm sharing it with you because I really think it's going to help you turn your achievements into scholarship money. So get your free worksheet at www.collegeadmissionstoolbox.com slash scholarship.